Hey guys, I'm Billy with Vertical Vans. I'm gonna give you a tour of my home, so come take a look. Hey, my name is Billy Vargon with Vertical Vans. So we're here in my home. I'm gonna give you a little tour, show you all the little details and what I've done with the setup and why. A little bit more about myself. I've been living in vans for three years now, and I started my company Vertical Van shortly after I moved into my first van. I saw a need for quality build outs in the market for people that either didn't have the time to do their own build out or they wanted to invest in something a little more quality than what their, their current skill set can allow. So, this van is the 12th one that we built out in that time frame, and I feel like I've come to a pretty, pretty optimized layout and and solution for, for how to live kind of the minimalist lifestyle in a van. So I'd like to show you a little bit more about what, what we've come to. So here we are in the kitchen. Um, we'll start out first with I think the coolest feature of this van and also the newest feature that's kind of simplified my life a lot is the induction cooktop. To install this, it uses a lot of power. Basically to get this working, I had a double the solar panels on top, so I have almost 600 watts of solar up there. And I switched to lithium ion batteries, so I can fully drain them. I have about 210 amp hours of that. With the, with the induction cooktop, I've been able to get rid of the propane system entirely. So I feel a lot safer, and I don't have to worry about filling that up ever. I'm running 100% off the sun. It uh, boils water really quickly, cooks food quickly as well. So it's been a really nice upgrade, and I'm really happy with it. So um, that's the induction cooktop. Moving on, we have the sink. Um, pretty simple setup, uh, just wide enough really to wash one pan at a time. Um, got a switch here for, for an electric pump. So kind of simplifies thing a little bit. Don't need a hand pump, but I can still easily conserve water. We have a little soap dispenser, so I don't have to worry about a bottle flying around while I'm driving. Um, I've got a nice big refrigerator. In, in this van. I upgraded actually from, from a 60 liter fridge to a 90 liter fridge. I was finding with the, the 60 liter fridges, the standard small ones in vans, I didn't have enough room to, to store greens like spinach and arugula. I ran out of room quite quickly. So the upgrade didn't really take up too much more space in my cabinetry overall, but it's been, it's been really helpful, you know, just kind of being more comfortable having, you know, whatever food I want on hand. Um, I got a bunch of pull-out drawers. Keep all all the heavy stuff so they don't fly around. The drawers have a soft close as well, so they stay shut while I'm driving. And a few more here, you know, just standard standard kitchen stuff. Silverware drawer, the junk drawer, random electronics, and then I've got a little drawer here, right next to the sink. Um, just a space limitation, but it's been pretty handy for toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, all that. And then down below, if you have a look, have a water system. Just very simple, standard van life stuff. Six gallon fresh water, six gallon gray water. Um, yeah, really easy to take out, fill up, dump out, everything. And got a few extra appliances stored down here as well. We have a electric water kettle with an outlet right here so with the lithium batteries powers this quite easily I think this only takes about 800 watts so just start this guy up and then I have water hot and ready to go for tea or even a little a little mate for some afternoon caffeine uh, quite excited about this stuff I spent the last few winters down in Patagonia climbing so that's a, a big part of their culture and I've brought it back here Last thing about the kitchen is uh, some overhead cabinet storage. These guys flip up, and, you know, standard, just got bread, different canned goods, maybe some fruits, a pineapple, all your standard storage up above. Here we are in the dining area and lounge. I'll give you a little rundown about how I have it laid out. So essentially, um, seating for two, maybe three if I have a guest over as well. 
for obvious reasons. Um, you can dine, you can have a guest over, or the lady or whatever. Um, I have this laid out, so we got a comfy backrest. I work on my computer a lot, so I wanted to make sure with some extra cushion that I was comfortable working for multiple hours at a time. Um, and also I wanted to incorporate storage into the seating area, so these all come off. They're removable um, in here. Just kind of have laundry hamper, you know, sleeping bag, easy access, and uh, a little thermorest that I use as a as a rug when it's really cold. Easily hidden and out of the way. And this one folds up for some more easy storage. Got backpack, you know, some other canned goods, vacuum for keeping keeping the van clean. So just keeps everything out of the way because if you have anything laying out in this small space it really it feels quite quite messy um the other thing i kind of incorporated was this uh this chase so if i want to sit like this reading a book I can easily lounge have my feet propped up um the other seating orientation is sitting crossways with the table upright it's just a nice ergonomic height for dining um, got a little cut out here, so so whoever you're eating with can easily hop back into the nice little nook there. And it's also my mobile desk, so grab my computer here, easily get it set up. I've got the uh, the outlet in a convenient location as well, so just plug that in and get to work. Yeah, that's kind of some of the thoughts I put into the, the dining area and really just making sure that I was comfortable. It's kind of, in my first few vans, I didn't, I didn't have a proper seating area like this and I found this was probably the single most uh, beneficial addition that I've made to the vans to make it really feel really homey and, and comfortable. All right, so now we're, we're in the bed. Um, a little bit about the design of this is we have it raised up so we have a lot of storage underneath in the garage for for all the toys, which we'll, we'll get to next. Um, but it's also not too high where, where I can't sit up comfortably to, to get dressed or even just sit, sit up comfortably to read or whatnot. So uh, the other nice thing about this bed that you'll notice is that it's oriented sideways. Um, this van's a ProMaster. Uh, it's, uh, so it's a little bit wider than a Sprinter or a Transit van. So I'll show you here. I'm, I'm five foot 11 and fit just about perfectly head to toe. I need six feet across and then if I need to stretch out a little bit I always end up sleeping at just a little bit of an angle it's just me by myself um, it's a queen size width so there's plenty of room for two people very very cozy bed memory foam mattress um, some other features is I have uh, this upper cabinet that extends the whole entire way these guys flip up a little easy grab lip below I've just got Standard stuff, clothes stored right there above the bed. Some books farther up and then food above the kitchen. Um, I've got the vent fan located right above me. So when it's hot out, I can easily, easily vent out the air. And I've got a USB outlet right here so I can charge my phone. Got a little table, put it there at night. You know, just really easy. Easy to get to, convenient to get to lying from bed. And also I have the, the control panel right here, which I can also reach from bed. Kind of going by memory where everything is, but had the lights, three zones, got a dimmer and a heater as well. that you can easily turn on for those, for those cold mornings when you want to get the heat running before you get out of bed. Um, so yeah, I can talk about the, uh, the control panel a little bit more and exactly what are the guts that are powering these, this van right here. So first thing I have a heater, it's a dual basso heater, uh, pretty standard for, for most people living in vans, I think. Um, this one runs off gasoline, it's a gasoline version, they make both diesel and gasoline, so it's really simple since it runs off the fuel tank and never really have to worry about the fuel because it's if I can drive the van, I can run the heater. Um, I've also got a dimmer switch here for you know, getting later at night, kind of dim down the LEDs so they aren't so harsh. Got three different zones. I got one above the kitchen for some more directional light while cooking, and then one for the bedroom and one for the living area. I've got a little a monitor here so I can keep track of my energy consumption in the van to make sure I'm not getting too low and 
just kind of geek out a little bit on what appliances are taking what amount of energy which uh, helps me in like any future designs of vans and then finally have a remote switch for the inverter uh, since I have a quite a big inverter and in powering the induction cooktop I try to keep it uh, keep it off when not in use so so yeah that is the the control panel so that's everything on the inside of the van um, let's go outside and we'll walk around and I'll show you what's going on in the garage So here we are in the garage, got lots of storage for, for all the gear I have. I mean, like most outdoor enthusiasts into climbing, skiing, biking, camping. So need a place to put it all. Um, first thing you notice, I've got the bed quite high so I can fit the bikes underneath easily with only taking off the front wheel, just so I can pull them out, slap on the wheel, go for a ride, quick and easy. It's long enough for, for skis as well. And just generally it's kind of a big open area for extra backpacks if, if any friends are coming along for trips out to the desert of the weekend. And here, we got a full center console with full out drawers. Uh, this one's full of all the climbing gear, you know, cams, draws, shoes, everything you need. I've got rope stored here, camping gear there, just other, other equipment. And then on this side, I've got some handy little little shelves so easy storage for ski poles some other bulky footwear that won't fit places you know a tie mat and lawn chair as well for for hanging out in the park um and yeah i've got a little handy little light switch there as well just a small little detail so i can easily easily find things when it's dark outside so so yeah that was uh that's a tour of my van my home i uh, hope you all enjoyed it uh, i'm gonna go on a bike ride Thanks again for stopping by. See you around. I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion and it will save you time and money. Also, we've created special videos for the ebook which enable you to see walkthroughs for how to do loads of things in the van conversion. So that's for water systems, for your electrics, for how to do simple woodwork joints that anyone can do. And I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent van conversion. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate you watching our content and we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects to feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.